In 2021, I was fired from a software engineer job and I decided to go solo and build my own websites. Today, I have built 23 websites from software, habits trackers, and AI tools, and I do everything myself from the code, the design, and the marketing. I'm going to show you every website that I made as well as the revenue it has generated. You'll see that it's very uneven. Some never made money, some made well over five figures. And I'm also going to share three of those websites that got acquired. The first app I built right after I got fired is called mood to movie It's a movie recommendation based on your mood. So if you feel like you're sleepy, it's probably going to recommend you some action movies. You can scroll through them. And if for some reason you don't like the movie, you can actually hide it and you will not see it again. I never tried to monetize this app, but the post went quite viral in total since I launched it. It got 100,000 visitors. One of the reasons is because I posted on Icon News. I had zero audience back then and I made the post there as a nobody and the post went viral and I got, I don't know, I think about 10,000 visitors from that post. And then it started some kind of like viral loop where some people on TikTok would basically get this information and reshare it on other platforms. That's probably why we see some spikes in traffic all around here. And also I added a little joke. It was not really intended, but the whole horny mood. It actually got people speak about this. They seemed like to enjoy the joke and that created some kind of like word of mouth, organic word of mouth. So pretty fun experience overall. After Mood to Movie, I thought of creating a project that potentially could generate revenue. So I'm a big fan of Atomic Habits, the book, and I thought, what if we combine habits and games? And I had this idea of building a habit tracker where you could tick your habits and it's gonna grow a little garden, a virtual garden that you can friends can see. So this is the landing page, a few videos demoing the product, and it's priced at $9 per month or $54 per year. When the users get access to the product, they end up on their like a habit page where you can add any habits you want and then you can tick them and you have this habit grid that's going to fill. So you see, I've not been really consistent recently. And then you have missions. So for instance, if you show up every day, you can open a box and that box will give you some little rewards so that you can plant flowers later in the game. And you have a few achievements, you have the streak system to gamify everything. Here is the little garden. So you have different kinds of flowers, they are different rarity. You unlock them as you progress through the game and you can plant them with the, the gems you collected from the quests. And there's also a social part where you can see what your friends are doing, where there's a little board of who's being the most consistent. And you can see here, I also managed to get 14,000 users on the app. The traffic charts looks like this. So I started launching the app on March, 2022. There has been a few spikes. I'll share which one of those later. And the traffic has been pretty consistent with a few thousand visitors per month. To launch the product, I went on Hacker News for the second time and I got also really lucky. The number of points here show that the app went quite viral and that's explained the spike in April 2022 where I get 14,000 visitors. And thanks to that, I also got the first customers for the first time since a long, long time. It was about two years ago since I haven't done any entrepreneurship projects. So I was really happy and I was so happy that actually my wife and I opened a bottle of champagne. I'm going to spare you the, the laughing. There you go. I spent about a year growing this habit tracker. I will show you what the revenue looks like. So I launched it about April, 2022, and then the revenue was not crazy whatsoever. It was about a hundred, few hundred dollars per month. At this point, I decided to remove the free plan and the revenue really went up. And then I stopped working on the app. So obviously the revenue went down later. And for the monthly recurring revenue, it went to something like $300 per month in recurring revenue. I also built an app, iOS and Android app, you can find it actually on the store still. So it also had some revenue coming from the stores. I think it's about an extra 50%. So probably at the peak, it was about $500 MRR. And because I stopped working on the app, the revenue obviously went down. And around this time, someone on Twitter reached out to me and offered to buy the product. That's why the revenue is actually zero right now because we did the transition to its own Stripe account. So I ended up selling the habit tracker to that person for 10,000 US dollar. So in total, he made almost $6,000 in revenue plus around $2,000 from the iOS and Android store. So that's a roughly 17 to 18,000 US dollar. At this point, I'm trying to grow my habit tracker, but I am a developer and I love creating stuff too much. And so I try to find some clever way to do marketing by creating things. And I came up with Books Calculator. It's basically a mini app that if you tell it how much you want to read every day, at which speed for how long, you're going to be able to read these many books. And it's going to show you some of the books you can read. It's basically a way to visualize your habits over the long run. And if you're curious and you say, oh, I want some motivation to read more, then it's going to do a little promotion for Habits Garden. I launched a tool on Product Hunt, Twitter, 
and everything. And I don't remember why there was a spike in traffic at the beginning, but it happened. And then the traffic has been pretty consistent over time and it's now a little bit growing. At this point on Twitter, I heard some people talking about programmatic SEO and I am totally new to SEO. So I was like, oh, let's try programmatic SEO for this project, see if I can learn something. And I realized that for books, there are some keywords that are easier to rank. And so I created all those pages. So if you type here, for instance, I build programmatically all those pages. So I think maybe they're like over 300 pages ranking on Google, probably at the moment. As you can see here, we have one page, another page. And so I'm basically trying to rank a bunch of URLs on Google and traffic wise, in the search console. So Google will not let me show you the data before December, but I started at zero like any projects and there was nothing for a month. And then someday at some point, Google started to pick my URLs and start to send some traffic to it. And it's not crazy, but it's driving a few dozens of clicks per day and it doesn't look like it's going to stop. So it's not making any money, but it's bringing some traffic and it's sending the traffic to the habit tracker. The fourth website I build is called 50 Hacks. It's a list of the best productivity hack on the internet. So anyone can post a new productivity hack, like, uh, I don't know, like no phone in the morning or airplane mode, whatever. This is that he's helping you. And then anyone as well without an account can like or dislike those posts. I try to mimic what's happening on Reddit. So there is a hot tab where you would basically see the most recent hacks posted that got the most engagement. You have the new one where people read the, basically the most recent post and you have the top ones all time. And for each of them, you can go click it and you can have a conversation with other users on the platform again without an account. I launched it on Product Hunt and for the first time ever, I got a badge and it ended up being second product of the day. So I was so happy. And that also helped my Twitter account grow a little bit. So I started to have a little audience. Traffic wise, it got a big burst at the very beginning, 45,000 visitors on the month of the launch. And in total so far, 200,000 visitors. That's quite a lot because it went viral a little bit everywhere. People would reshare this on Twitter, TikTok and everything. And, and consistently, there will be some new people coming onto the platform. And so I decided to monetize it with advertisements. So at the bottom of each post, there will be an ad placement as well as somewhere. Yeah, you can see here, this is an ad, for instance, for actually one of my products dog fooding my own product. And at the bottom, there is another banner here that is an ad as well. And if I'm not mistaken, to promote, to advertise on 50 hacks. Yeah. So this is the paywall to advertise on 50 hacks. It's connected directly to my analytics dashboard and is going to show you how much traffic you can expect to get on your site. And there is a payment link. It didn't make a lot of money, but it made $350, which is pretty fun for a project like this one. Somewhere in the summer of 2022, I was traveling from Indonesia to France and I set myself a stupid challenge of building an entire app within the plane. And I commented on Twitter so that I had something to deliver and I managed to deliver a little something. It's called Buddy Crush. It's uh, accountability groups for uh, friends. This is the landing page here. And then when you sign up, you can join uh, groups with people and you can complete your habits and you can see what they completed. So you can either create a new group or you can join an existing group. So you have groups for, uh, I don't know, people who wants to tweet every day, people who want to become game developers, health group, like workout, stretch every day and all those kind of like daily habits. And when you complete your habit is going to show some little confetti. I launched it on Product Hunt and to my surprise, it also got a badge, third product of the day, which is amazing for a very tiny product like this one. I guess it's because I got so much love from people on Twitter that they helped and pushed the launch a little bit higher. Traffic wise, nothing as much as the previous apps, about 10,000 visitors in total. And the app was free and it's still 100% free. So no revenue generated for this one. Then I also built this little game called Decision Game. The idea is if you have two options, like you hesitate between, let's say, a burger and a pizza, then when you press start, you have the overthinking monsters and you try to eat kitty. And you have to choose one or the other before the monster actually eats the cat. And when you press, the cat is happy and your score is saved in the database and you can see there are 25,000 people who won the game and 5,000 who let the overthinking monster eat the cat. Traffic wise, it was about 32,000 visitors. So I launched around here, it got decent traffic and then now it's almost to zero every month. One of the reasons I built this game was to promote uh, Habits Garden, my habit tracker. Shortly after that, I realized I already built a bunch of apps that use games in order to achieve real life goals. So I decided to create a gamify list. It's a director 
plethora of gamification apps. So whether you're trying to learn math, JavaScript, finance, uh, building habits, any app that will use games will appear in here. And so I paid someone on, um, I think it was Upwork to gather some information about games. So we have the famous Duolingo, we have my decision game here, we have my habit tracker here, and also apps like Strava that use some leaderboards and things like that. And each app would get a page. So for Duolingo, for instance, people can actually leave reviews. You would have some information about the app. Is it free? Is it not free? Where you can use it? Related apps. And you can also search apps by categories. Let's say uh, carrier. You can have apps to, I don't know, do something like team buildings and all that. Traffic wise, we are at a pretty decent traffic. I launched, but nothing crazy happened. But you'll, I'll show you why it's getting consistent traffic with about 30,000 visitors on the app so far. It's because um, I didn't know it was random, but actually I rank for some keywords. Like for instance, you can see Bounty Tasker here. So there are some keywords that start to rank for those apps and somehow people find the app valuable. So Google keep pushing and giving me some more impressions every month. I tried to capitalize on the traffic and add a monetization on the app so you can promote your own app. It will be featured on some different places on the site. It's been a few months now and I managed to get zero customers. At the end of the year 2022, I started building an app called Visualize Habit. It's basically an extension of Books Calculator. You can pick any habit, say how much you're going to do per day, how many days per week, and it's going to show you some nice visuals on what you can achieve over a year. And then you can build your little uh, habits card where you can see all the habits you want to pick and some fun things like, uh, I don't know, if you read 18 books, you'll read for like three days and 19 hours in total, for instance. So let me show you how that works. Let's say I'm going to build my habit grid and I want to code, I don't know, 30 minutes, uh, three times a week and I want to walk let's say 10 minutes every day and when you press enter then you're gonna see your habits grid I call it this way pretty visual there's a way to share your card so you will download the photo and you can send it to any friends. It's a little promotion for my Habit Tracker Habits Garden. And when you click on this link, it's going to open automatically the app Habits Garden and it's going to import all the habits the person wanted to build. So there is a little onboarding flow and you can see you can tick your new walk habits. And then, yeah, that's typical onboarding flow for Habits Garden. Traffic wise, it was probably one of the best launch I've ever made the month I launched. So it shows the traffic for January, but because I launched it, I think by the end of the year, so that's probably the new year resolution time that's also helping a lot. It went viral on Reddit and other platforms and it got a Golden Kitty Award from Product Hunts and as well as a Product Hunt badge. A huge part of it is because I started to make those videos where I would plug myself into a popular movie or a popular podcast and promote my app. In my YouTube channel, if you want, you'll see a bunch of those videos. They do usually do pretty well on Twitter because they're pretty new and people were not expecting to see these from a mini startup founder. So that obviously brought a lot of traffic to the app and uh, managed to get a bunch of signups for Habits Garden. I built another habit tracker style. Uh, I promise this is the last one. It's called Hero Fit, where basically you pick a workout avatar and every day when you work out, you're going to grow your little avatar. You got the product tons, product of the day, which I was really, really happy with. When you sign up, you have your, this is your dashboard. So those are my avatars. Let's say I surf this morning, you can complete and you get a little bit of XP. You can also create new avatars by choosing whatever sports that you like, say the frequency and then create your avatar. There's also a mobile app for uh, Hero Fit. It's it's uh, available on the App Store and on the Android Store. Same as I did for Habits Garden. It's called Capacitor. It's a tech that will basically take all my HTML, CSS files and put them into a web view that is going to run on any device. And so within a few days, I had the app live on the stores. I actually built this app live on YouTube. If you find somewhere in my channel, some of the first streams I did for, I think, what, seven days? Yeah, I spent seven days building the product. I did it live while I was actually eating. Some days I would spend 10 hours on the stream and bunch of people from Twitter would come and debug me, help me with the design. Like Manu, I remember, is the one who helped me make those like, cute avatar things. Overall, it was a really fun experience. And so when I launched on Product Hunt, I managed to get the product of the day badge thanks to the community of people who actually helped and supported the launch. And traffic wise, nothing crazy, but still pretty decent. And for some reason, it's still getting some monthly traffic. And of course, I tried to add a paid plan to add more avatars, but I think I made like probably $30 of sales. 
early 2023, everybody was talking about AI and I wanted to build an app that uses ChatGPT. And I was totally new to AI, so I reached out to my friend called Martin and together we built Naval AI. It's a little chatbot on Messenger and on Telegram and WhatsApp that's using ChatGPT4 that was trained on Naval's tweet, uh, Naval Ravikant. And then inside of your WhatsApp, you can ask questions to uh, Naval, at least what looks like a version of uh, Naval. It's a fairly simple landing page. I also made a little uh, funny-ish video about the product where I was actually talking to Naval. Here, I was wondering, how do I become famous like you? Uh, being a celebrity is no good. Uh, same, it's also available in my YouTube channel if you want to have a look at it. We disconnected the app because it was a little bit uh, pricey and some people were abusing the system and it's not like it was a business. We just did this for fun. So I think we made a few hundred dollars. I don't have access to a Stripe account and traffic wise, we had a decent traffic for a tiny app like this one. To stay on the Naval trend, I built Naval 25. So I pulled 300 quotes from Naval and put them on a little website and they are organized by the most liked one and people can vote for them if they want where you have have random quotes and you have to choose the one you like the most and you have 25 votes. This one is pretty nice and then it's going to increase the counters and update the page every day or every 12 hours. It's a very simple app I did just for fun and it didn't get much traffic. Okay, so this is the last app I built that did not make money. It's called Fake It Until You Make It. It's an app that's available on iOS and Android. It's a very simple app. You can basically send yourself fake payment notification that look like the Stripe notifications. You would use it either to prank your friends or to motivate yourself to go back and grind and do the work. The link page is pretty simple. I made a video in the Wolf of Wall Street and this video actually got a bunch of attention and that's the moment where my Twitter account started to grow. Back then the app was paid. I think I made probably two sales. Actually, it made a little bit of money, but like probably like something like $30. I made the app free now and instead I'm adding a promotion for another product of mine I'm gonna show you later. At this point, I had built over 10 products and I had a little portfolio website for myself where I would show little cards of the things that I built and I got good feedback from people on Twitter. So I decided to make it a product. And so I built IndiePage. It's like Linktree for entrepreneurs where you can have your own profile descriptions and show all of your startups. There are about 5,000 solopreneurs registered and the profiles are public. So this is, for instance, the profile of Martin. You can see his uh, revenue. You can see all of his startups link, just like you would do on Linktree. And you have some other cool features, like you have some analytics. You can personalize your page. You can connect a newsletter and it's priced at $25 for one year of access or $45 for an entire lifetime deal. This is my indie page dashboard. So you see in my profile, I can do anything here. I can use Markdown to update my bio right here. I can connect my newsletter like Substack or Beehive, and then I can add any startup I want. I can drag and drop and reorganize them, hide them, add some new startups. I can also connect them with Stripe. So that's what I do for all my startup. I add a Stripe restricted API key to indie page and it's going to fetch automatically the revenue from Stripe so that the revenue is automatically updated every 12 hours. And then I can personalize my page so I can change uh, the font. I can change the colors, for instance. I can do literally a bunch of things. And I have access to some analytics so I can see the total visitors on my indie page. I can see where the pupils are coming from. I can see which links they click and few other things like this. And finally, people can connect their own domain name so it looks like a really a portfolio website. I try to make a kind of like a clone of Product Hunt where uh, startups will be displayed on a discovery page and people can upvote those. It got some attention, but it did not do anything crazy. When I launched on Product Hunt back then, it ended up being product of the day. I was really happy. I think it was one of my best launch so far. And traffic wise, there has been almost almost 200,000 visitors. That's quite a lot. It's also because some people share the indie page to their audience. So it also brings some extra traffic. For instance, this is my own indie page. And revenue wise, this is an old Stripe account. I disconnected it in January. So you would add $3,000 in revenue to this. So it made a little bit above 11,000 US dollar with something ranging from 500 to 1,200 every month. I wanted to play with AI a little bit more. So I created Make Lending. It's a website generator using AI. So people would type some text and the AI will create a landing page for that query. I would add pictures, text and buttons. The landing page is fairly simple. It shows some customers demo, as you can see here, two features and the price has changed. But when I started, it was a one-time payment, like something like $30 per landing page. So let me show you the dashboard. Uh, let me pick one website and there are a bunch of features on each of those websites. I'm going to show a demo of each of them. So this is the website editor. By default, it's going to generate 
generate the website and then the customer can do anything they want. So uh, you can change the text, you can add some new buttons, you can change where those buttons will go. You can change the font, the colors, the themes. There really are uh, many things you can do here. You can also add sections. So there are a few like uh, headers, testimonials, uh, CTAs, pricing, really a bunch of things here. I basically took all the components I built for my previous website and I tried to put them in this site. And when someone adds a website, it will normally, I think, if I remember well, is going to populate, create some uh, text using ChatGPT. And sometimes if it's working, it should create an, an image with AI. The customers can also use, let's say with a postcard, they can also use the Unsplash library and add anything they want in here. So I'm going to remove that section because it's not supposed to be here. And the user can preview the website on a mobile, laptop, whatever, so that they know uh, what how the page will look like. And when they are ready, they can actually deploy the site to their own domain name or they can export the code to HTML. And there are also a few analytics, like how many visitors on the site. Same, I reuse what I use for my other product in the page. Same components applied here. Traffic-wise, it went pretty well. It's a trendy AI product, so a bunch of visitors, over 10,000 visitors per month. And revenue-wise, I started under a different branding. It started as Lending AI. It made about 7,000 thousand US dollar and then I rebranded to make lending later because lending AI was actually used by a big software company and he made another uh, eight point six thousand US dollar so in total it was something around sixteen seventeen thousand US dollar and tech wise I was spending about 10% of the profit for OpenAI credits. So for copy generation with ChatGPT and for the image generation using stable diffusion. Around November, December 2023, I realized I was competing against uh, big companies like Framer, uh, Squarespace, even WordPress, like all those website builder. And so it was kind of hard to know how to take the product to the next level and I decided to sell the product. So I listed it on Acquire and within a few weeks the deal was done and made $35,000 in sale from this startup. And so in total for make lending I made a little bit over $50,000 US dollar. I stayed in the AI world and I created Workbook PDF. It's a little platform where you can generate exercises to learn a new language on the topics that you love. So let's say you want to learn French and you love food, you can create a workbook with exercises uh, all about food. Food. So you would get exercises with word related to food as well as some like a food uh, cultural facts and interesting things. The landing page looks like this. There is a little demo of the workbook so people know what they are purchasing and the pricing. It's a day pass. So if you access the product for 30 days, you'll pay $30. I didn't want to go for subscriptions because I'm a big uh, fan of no subscription. As a customer, I don't like subscriptions. So I would like to avoid subscriptions if I can. And when you get access to one of those pass, you can basically generate any workbooks. On the student side, this is what you will see. You can create a workbook where you would pick the language you actually want to learn. You would choose the level you're at and you would pick the topic that you're interested in. And once the workbook is generated, you will have this uh, little page right here where you have exercises, where you have to match words, some interesting cultural facts, complete the sentence, find the right missing words and all these kind of grammar vocabulary things. You can also download it as a PDF file so that you can print it and do it without a computer. Traffic wise, it also went pretty well. I launched it on AI directory tools and it's still getting consistent traffic, but it's not really making much money. It made some money during the launch time and then now it's a few dozen dollars per month. At this point, I was doing the same thing over and over, like set up a landing page, send emails to customer to confirm their login, listen for Stripe events so I can update the user in the database and all that. And I decided to make a little boilerplate for myself so I can reuse it for all my projects. And I thought, why not making it open so that anyone can use it? And so I created Chipfast. It's a code base for developers to launch their startups faster. This is the landing page here. And we have a little demo of the product, which is me with a beard explaining uh, what's going on in the boilerplate. It's price uh, like this at the moment. And we have some testimonials here. And one of the biggest thing for this boilerplate is that I was a nobody for years. Like for six years, I was no one literally like doing project that nobody wanted to use and seeing that I received hundreds of messages from people who purchased ship fast and that I say that it changed their lives. It made me just so, so, so happy. So yeah, enough of me bragging, but the, the, the testimonials are one of the most precious thing I got from this boilerplate. So it is a code base, so it's available on GitHub. And there's also a little documentation that helps the people to get started, set up their landing page, set up Stripe and all that kind of things. There are also a bunch of components. As I keep uh, making new apps, I add new components to the boilerplate, so it's more complete. 
traffic wise it is probably the app that got the most traffic i've ever had 4000 visitors in the last six months or so maybe seven months now most is coming from social media so like twitter and youtube and also some word of mouth and financially this is the first trip account i had i disconnected it in early january so that's a little bit over 200,000 us dollar generated since the launch plus another 176,000 us dollar and something like probably eight thousand dollars collected from other payments like paypal so in total, she first made 380,000 US dollars in revenue. Had to turn on the light, it's getting dark here. I built by dispute. It's a little software that helps prevent disputes or chargeback happening on Stripe. Quick backstory, when I was working on Habits Garden, the first five payments that were made were made with a fraudulent credit card. So someone testing a stolen credit card on my site and the payment went through and I was banned like literally banned from Stripe overnight. And luckily I had a little audience on Twitter back then and I managed to speak with someone who had a deeper look at my account and reinstated it, but I was really, really scared. So this product by dispute aims at reducing chances that you have fraudulent payments in your account. I show some examples of, you know, like if this happened, then do that. There is also this little component here. So some solo entrepreneurs like myself back then have no clue that you could get in trouble for a few disputes on Stripe. So this is what I try to highlight on this page. And then I have a few demo of the product and we have the pricing section here where it's basically a pay per transaction. The more transaction you protect, the cheaper it gets. And on the dashboard size, this is what it looks like. So this is my, I actually use that product for all of my other products. So you would add a new Stripe account. By dispute would listen to events on your Stripe account. And based on the rules you set up, it will try to prevent some fraudulent actions. So you would add new rules. Like let's say if a credit card was reported stolen, then refund the last payment. And then there is a little uh, notification tab where uh, this is the actual data that's happening on my account. And you can directly uh, go to your Stripe account to check the transactions or sometimes even just refund it or send yourself an email or all those kind of like a uh, prevention traffic wise it's still pretty decent couple thousand visitors during the launch nice and money wise it made 3.2 thousand us dollar when i launched it and then as for other accounts i had to swap my accounts and it made another 750 bucks this year so we are almost at four thousand dollar in revenue for any new product I launch, I created one fun-ish video that I would post on social media. So either I would go with Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street, or I would play World of Warcraft in real uh, life. And those videos really helped me kickstart the journey. It would create an initial boost on all my launch and get the first visitors. And people on Twitter love the video, so I decided to make a mini course. So this is a landing page where I'm basically telling my story exactly how it happened. We've seen here the first video I made with Drogan for the product Visualize Habits that started to kink things off. And then the story as it is today where most of my product actually end up getting a product and badge. And even I got some big names in the game that were reaching out to me that say they love the videos. So the landing page would show some features like everything that the course is about. Little hint, most of the fun jokes are made with AI. I'm actually not a smart guy and not a funny guy as well, but the AI, ChatGPT is really good at crafting jokes. And that is what I use to make those videos. And I also use AI to create fake backgrounds and create those like a fake characters in the movie. The course looks like this. So this is the curriculum on the left and on the right, there are all the videos where I basically explain everything that I do, how to do step by step from the script to uh, shooting yourself, editing the movie, and I also break down some of the videos that I made. Traffic wise, it's doing pretty decent. It's also connected to my Twitter. So the traffic is coming from there. And financially, it made 6.7 thousand last year. And this year it made 8.7 thousand. So a total of about 15 thousand US dollar. The next website is called Logofast. It's a free tool to generate uh, little icons. So for every website I make, I always do the same process. I take an SVG and I just change the width and add some colors. And this is the logo for all my products. And I thought, why not making it a product itself? And so you would go here, choose whatever icon you want, and then you can change uh, the size of the icon. You can change the width of uh, the borders, change the colors, everything. There are some presets like this, like that rounded, whatever you want. You can also ask AI to make a logo for you. So you can describe your business and it will suggest some icons and matching colors. And here on the right side, there's a little promotion for my Shipfast boiler plate so that hopefully it's paying back the time I invested for this product. I launched it on Product Hunt and it was, I think, my best launch so far. So product of the day, product of the week and second product of the month, as well as a Golden Kitty Award for 2023. I was so happy. I guess it's uh, this video who helped a lot where I'm playing with 
Matthew McConaughey. People loved it. And obviously that spread the word out and the launch went quite viral. At the same time, when people download their logo right here, it's going to save those logos in my database. And I created a little directory of logos made with a logo fast. And if you go here, you can see, for instance, a logo made for uh, softwares and you can see some of the logos that were made. And if you click on some of them, you can actually save it on your local browser or you can download it or you can even edit it. And then it's going to open logo fast and lets you edit that SVG. The purpose of this experiment is to rank some pages on Google. I tried earlier this year and Google has already ranked over 2000 pages. So if you search for icons for a SaaS, for instance, you might find one of the icons generated with LogoFast. It didn't make any money directly, but thanks to the promotion for ShipFast, it generated some sales, although I didn't track any of them. When I realized I gave Stripe over a thousand US dollars just to generate PDF invoices, I decided to build my own product so I don't have to pay the Stripe fee. So I created Zinvoice. This is the landing page, though the typical when you create invoice with Stripe for one-time payment, you can pay up to $2 per invoice. And with Zinvoice, it's a one-time payment and you can generate as many invoices as you want. The current pricing is this way. It's a one-time payment of $49 or $69 for unlimited Stripe accounts. And then the customers would end up on their dashboard where they have a unique link that looks like this that they can send to the customers so that the customers can automatically generate their invoices. The users can edit the details they want to show on their invoice so they can change their business name, the customer support emails, their VAT numbers and all that. And on the customer side, when they send the link to the customers, they'll land on this page where they can retrieve invoices or actually they can retrieve any payments made for the business. And when they click here, they'll get an email that looks like this. And when they click on this link, they would end up on this page where they can see all the payments they made for the business and they can download their invoice as well as edit a few information if they made a mistake in the name or if they want to change the VAT number, for instance. And financially wise, it made a little bit over $4,000 for the past two months of running the product. And my most recent product is called Poopup. It's a little plugin that lets your website show some notifications like the one at the top right. I created it after Zenvoice because people love the notification. I even got the attention of Guillermo, the CEO of Versal, which was absolutely amazing. So this is how the landing page looks like. Um, we have a little demo of the product with some of the features some use cases and the pricing here. So it's price uh, one time payment, $9 for one website and $19 for unlimited websites. The user dashboards looks like this. So people would add their website here and then they could click on it and they can customize anything from when to show the message to when should they hide the message. And they can also customize the message itself. So they can drag and drop to reorganize, uh, change the text, change the icons as they want. And at the bottom, there is a little script to add to their website for the poop ups to show up. And when it's going to work, it's going to look like a little bit like this. Here you go. And revenue wise, it made 3.2 thousand since the launch, which was like a little bit over a month ago. So pretty nice for a tiny product like this one. It took me three days to create this product. I'll link to another video here if you're curious about the tricks I use to build fast. There are two more softwares I would like to show you that I created at the very beginning of the journey when I was learning how to code. So the past two years or so, I was a solo entrepreneur making all those projects I showed you. And then prior to that, I was working as a software engineer for a company. And prior to that, I was learning how to code and I created those softwares. And the first one I created is called Virallybots. It's the landing page you can see here. It's basically a little messenger, Facebook messenger bot to increase escape room businesses conversions. So I would work with escape room business where you would go with your friends to solve clues and Puzzles, and I would connect a little messenger bot to their Facebook page. So it would look like this. Their users would type on the buttons on their Facebook messenger app and the bot will automatically reply with a few games. You could have puzzles like solve this uh, puzzle here, solve that puzzle, and they would get some points. And when they get enough points, they can get a discount coupon for the escape room business I was working with. And so my customers would use these uh, fun messenger games to convince their own customers that they are the best escape rooms in town. As I was learning how to code, this is basically just a landing page. There is no user account. If they want to get started, they would have to email me and I would have to manually go to their Facebook page to connect a messenger bot. And I remember taking a course on Udemy where the teacher was explaining how to interact with the Facebook API. And I just copy pasted what I had deployed a Node.js uh, server. I think he was Heroku back then and it was working and I was just adding some more messages. I literally had no real understanding of what was actually going on. And so I spent a little bit over a year on this business. It's actually how I made my first internet dollar online. So it generated a little bit over 69,000 US dollar. I grow to a couple thousand dollars per month. Uh, the MRR actually, I think reached 4K 
in the month of uh, December 2019, escape room businesses would pay $200 per month to access the product, the messenger bot. And I had a couple, like maybe 20 customers at the same time. Then COVID killed the entire business. And then I burned out and I abandoned the business completely. And he kept making a little bit of money over the years until the last customer churn really recently. This business helped me understand the foundation of programming. And I built another software later that would cover the most important part of web development. One of the main struggle I had with Virallybot is that customers would have to share their messenger bot with their customers in order to get results. And because of that, not all escape room businesses were getting good results with the product. So I decided to create a new one called Game Widget, which is basically a similar thing. So it's a game, but instead of being on Facebook Messenger, it's on a website. So the code is old, so it's hard to show you, but there used to be a little widget here at the bottom left that people can click and actually play a game. And so when they would click here, it will open a pop-up window in the center and they will be able to play this game right here. And so it's like a mini escape room within a website so people can go across different rooms and then they have some puzzles to solve. So here they will use the key to open the safe to get the lamp. They could turn on the light here using the lamp, get some stuff. And once they're done solving all the puzzles, they will get a discount coupon for the business so they can book. I launched this product for a very wide market. I didn't target escape rooms, but like basically any business. So I really struggled to get customers. I think I get about $50 in my monthly recurring revenue. The pricing is set to pay per use. So it's $19 per 500 website visitors, which is a little bit pricey, but the commission rates were really good. And just like what COVID happened and my other software went down, I also abandoned this business and didn't touch it. The product was making about $50 to $80 per month. And so last year I decided to try to sell it and I managed to find a buyer. So it was exactly 80 MRR. So that's pretty almost nothing. And the person bought it for 4.3 thousand US dollar, which is kind of amazing. That was the first startup that got acquired and I was really happy with that. All right, that's a wrap. If you want to check the tech stack I'm using to build all those products, I'll link to a video somewhere here. And if you enjoyed the video and would like to subscribe to the channel, that would really mean a lot. Until the next video, I hope you just ship it.